The First Bible Network is your home for the Gospel of the Lord. The latest news, history, and analysis from the perspective of the first Christians. Tune into the FBN Worldwide 24 7 radio stream at theveryfirstbible.org. Time for another edition of the Right Bible Podcast. Stripping away 2,000 years of false doctrine isn't easy, but we've had lots of coffee. Now your host, Darren Kalama. As you can imagine, a religious program like ours gets a lot of interesting emails. And a subject that has sparked the most interest has to do with something we've never done an episode on. It's a subject you see preachers on TV screaming about endlessly, working themselves up into a lather, mainly because it's a subject that really rings the cash register for them in the form of donations and book sales. You would think these evangelical preachers on TV would be happy with the money and private jets they get from Israeli packs and Judaizers. No, they're even fleecing people in the trailer parks. Because the subject has been tainted and monetized by these serpents, I'm reticent to really even get into it, but it should be addressed. I have asked for and received permission to have any and all book promotional ads removed from today's show so that we can get this done cleanly and without taint. The subject is eschatology, the end times, the final day, the final days, the rapture. All words and terms used to describe what some people think will happen when Jesus returns. As listeners of the show are aware, the very first Bible of 144 AD, the Bible used by the first Christians, has only one gospel. It's the Gospel of the Lord, the revelation given to Paul directly by Jesus on the road to Damascus. Just one gospel, not four gospels. The truth doesn't need four different versions of itself, and it certainly doesn't need it from unknown authors and people who never met Jesus, people like Luke and Mark. And by the way, Luke and Mark weren't apostles. Don't take my word for it, please. Check it for yourself. In any event, people have been wondering what the Gospel of the Lord says about the end times. So we would posit that whatever Paul says about the end times is something we should want to know. Now, some of it is strange, very strange. I suppose like when Paul was trying to describe the words he heard when he received his revelation, the exact mechanics of what's going to happen are hard to grasp, and we simply don't have the right words to describe them yet, so we do the best we can like using pictograms to try and help someone living deep in the jungles of Africa understand nuclear fission or quantum mechanics and astrophysics. We do what we can. So I think it is with what we're told about the second coming. I'll just read it without comment and give you the page numbers as I go along. You can also read it at theveryfirstbible.org.org. Even after reading it a few times, what I thought was obvious became not so obvious when I thought about it in relation to, in the context of, other verses referencing the end times. It's all extremely cryptic, and I don't pretend to know what really any of it means. You're just going to have to decide for yourself. And if you want to discuss it, I'll add a link in the show notes for an, like a little online chat area that we can all get together at. One thing to keep in mind is that the words in that day and in that night are used, and they are words that precede specific events which will transpire specifically during the day, with another set of specific events transpiring at night. Can we logically infer and deduce that whatever is going to happen is going to happen within a 24-hour period encompassing the day and night? Yes, yes we can. But there's more than just the division of day and night, as we'll see during the reading. It appears we'll have a choice to make during the day, in that day. But we will also have no choice in what happens in that night. And by the way, of the four Gospels, it's actually Luke that most closely follows the events written here. All right, let's just delve right into it. The first reference begins on page 35, chapter 8, verse 4. And it says, 
Be therefore ready also, for the Son of Man comes at an hour when you think not. Next is page 36, chapter 8, verse 5. I came to cast fire on earth, and what will I if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I constrained till it be accomplished? Do you think that I am come to give peace on earth? I tell you no, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two and two against three. They shall be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And he said also to the multitudes, When you see the cloud rising up from the west, straight away you say, There comes a shower, and it comes to pass. And when you see a south wind blowing, you say, There will be scorching heat, and it comes to pass. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the face of the earth and the heavens, but how is it that you do not interpret this time? Yea, and why even of yourselves judge not what is right? Next is chapter 10, page 39, verse 3. Then we're going to move on to chapter 13, page 47, verse 5. Then page 48, chapter 17, verse 2. Then pages 59, 60, and 61. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and making a journey unto Jerusalem. Then one said unto him, Lord, are they few that are going to be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in through the narrow gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in, and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up, and has shut to the door, and you begin to stand outside, and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence you are. Then shall you begin to say, We did eat and drink in your presence, and you didst teach in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me all you workers of unrighteousness. There shall be the weeping and the gnashing of teeth, when you shall see all the righteous in the kingdom of God, and yourselves thrust out and held back outside. And when he was questioned by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God comes, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God comes not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there. For behold, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto the disciples, The days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you shall not see it. And they shall say to you, Lo here, or lo there, go not away, nor follow after them. For as the lightning that lightens out of the one part under heaven shines unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer many things, and be rejected of this generation. And as it came to pass in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also as it came to pass in the days of Lot. They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But in the day that Lot went out from Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven, and destroyed them all. According to these things shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop, and his goods in the house, let him not go down to take them away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return to the things behind. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I say unto you, in that night there shall be two men shall be on one bed, the one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding upon the same stone, the one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, 
and the other shall be left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wherever the body is, there will the eagles be gathered together. And as some spoke about the temple, that it was adorned with goodly stones and offerings, he said, As for these things which you behold, the days will come in which there shall not be left a stone upon a stone that shall not be thrown down. And they asked him, saying, Teacher, when then shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when these things are going to take place? And he said, See that you be not led astray, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is come near. Go not therefore after them, and when you shall hear of wars and tumults, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not immediately. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilences, and terrors, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you, and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn out to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before how to answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all those opposed to you shall not be able to gainsay nor withstand, and you shall be delivered up even by parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends, and they shall put some of you to death, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. In your patience possess you your souls, but when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that her desolation is come near. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath unto this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all the nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down by nations, until the times of nations be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in sun, and moon, and stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and waves roaring, men fainting for fear, and for expectation of the things which are coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with great power. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draws near. And he spoke to them a parable, Behold the fig tree, and all the trees, when they already shoot forth you see it, and know your own selves that summer is already near. So likewise you, when you see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say unto you, the heaven and the earth shall in no wise pass away till all things be accomplished. The heaven and the earth shall pass away, but my words shall in no wise pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be weighed down with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the earth, Watch therefore at every season, praying that you will be accounted worthy to escape all these things that are going to take place. And every day he was teaching in the temple, and at night he went out and lodged on the mountain that is called Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple to hear him. And there you have it. Everything related to eschatology as it appears in the Gospel of the Lord, what Jesus wanted Paul to tell us word for word. And it's a lot to unpack and absorb. Uh, personally, uh, I was struck by the scene which described the man on his roof during the day, and he sees something. And then a warning for him not to go back in the house and retrieve his belongings after seeing it. And again, this is just my own personal takeaway, but that means whatever he sees is moving slow enough that he has time to 
to think about what it is that he should do next. He can make a decision. He's got time to make a decision. Otherwise, why the warning? It sounds like we'll all see something or maybe feel something so massively overwhelming and we'll have time to ponder what it is and what we should do next after seeing it. Something really massive and slow moving. And we're not supposed to think of saving our material possessions as it slowly approaches us. This inevitable giant massive thing, whatever it is. And I think when this massive event happens, you should simply stay very still and pray to God. And I think the prayer, or if I'm around when this happens, the prayer that I'm going to recite will be the original Lord's Prayer. And I'll have a link in the show notes uh, to it. Anyway, I think that's enough for today, don't you? Uh, by the way, we had some incidents here regarding some episodes banned by YouTube. And you know the phrase, when one door closes, another opens. Well, as a result of the censorship, we decided to start a new outreach program called the First Bible Network, FBN and it will house our complete digital library, podcasts, videos, ebooks, all in one place. It's also where we now have a 24-7 worldwide radio stream. FBN doesn't ask for donations, but we do request your prayers. Help other Christians reconnect with the pre-Nicene faith by sharing the site and episodes on social media.